you can find yourself in a place where you are living a life where you do what you love for a living. Hello and welcome to Own Your Lane. This is the best place for ambitious people who are taking charge of their lives, making that impact, making that money, and living fulfilling lives. I am so glad you joined me. And this is the last episode, I hope, the last episode in the Purpose series that I've been running lately. A recap. We have talked about the general and specific purpose. We have talked about exploring your purpose then hindrances to your purpose. We have talked about your power. And now we're talking about walking in your purpose and walking into your power. After you've done all these processes, you're embracing this, you're doing all that, you need to have a master plan that guides the whole process. When I say master plan, it sounds really formal, but it's just having a map, a vision, because when you don't have a vision, you will perish. When you don't have a strategy guiding you to where you're going, you will likely not end up there. Well, life will offer you some curveballs and some challenges which are expected. But when you have a plan, then you can pivot because you had a plan. When you don't have a plan, those curveballs can be detrimental. They can just take you off course completely. And that's why a plan is important. The first thing you need to do is honor your purpose. You have done all this work up to here. Honor your purpose. Understand what it is. Be clear. Write it down. Speak it. Declare it on it now make it your purpose make it your goal to live in alignment with your purpose if that's not possible because maybe you are in a job you're doing this and that you already have a whole life and responsibility set up spare time that's how you honor your purpose spare time in your day to focus on the purpose work on making sure that you're doing work on your purpose because this work will light you up this work will open doors for you this work will direct you and bring you fulfillment if you're really determined and focused the work you do on your purpose the work you do on your calling on this mission that you have can actually overtake the rest of your work financially as well as impact wise you can find yourself in a place where you are living a life where you do what you love for a living what you love is paying your bills. What you love is helping you live a lifestyle that you want and everything like that. But that will need you to do some work. And that means you make time and put energy in your purpose. That is how you honor your purpose. If you're a Christian, I will say obedience. You've been through this process. You have understood that God has called you and chosen you and given you abilities, given you a call on your life. Now obey. That means you're going to take risks based on this word you're going to take risks based on this purpose you're going to take chances and make investments in this purpose and for me that looked like starting a business that looked like making a video that looked like exploring getting new mentors it can be anything but honoring your purpose means you're taking risks now in that view you're taking chances now in that light you are now pursuing and putting energy. The second thing is ensure that you're having a mental transformation. Your mind, your mind will sabotage a lot. Your mind will give you what you have fed it over time. If you have not been living fully according to your purpose so far, that means your mind has consumed so much and has a map of how your life should look like. It has its own boundaries, which it's going to hold you accountable to. So you might say, okay, from today, I wake up at 2 a.m. to pray. From today, I wake up at 6 a.m. and go running. And your mind will be like, nah, we're not having that. <laughs> so your mind is your greatest ally when you train it. But it can also be your greatest enemy when it's untrained. So you need a mind transformation. So be careful what you feed your mind. That's why it's important what you listen to, what you hear. That's why we talk about books podcasts, company, who you hang out with and everything, mentors, accountability, all those things are coming up to feed your mind differently so that your mind can become your ally. It can keep you accountable in the things that you want to achieve, not sabotage you towards the goals that you're trying to achieve. So be clear about the mind transformation process you're putting yourself in. And if you know that your mind has a power to sabotage you, you should expect it. Don't think that, ah, oh, I don't feel like running today, so that's it. No, you should remember, your mind will try as much as possible to keep you in your comfort zone, to keep you safe, to keep you protected, to keep you to, keep you to what you're used to. You can actually tell a friend, I need to go running at 5 a.m. 
please remind me please hold me accountable please like you are aware that is you being aware of the fact that you will not want to do it when the time comes and so you need extra accountability and when you have to explain to your friend that i didn't because I, I, and you have so many excuses then you will feel bad and then your mind will start thinking okay let's just do this for them let's just do this to to just not have that experience again when we have no excuses to explain and everything like that you get it mind transformation plan has to be taught the third thing is now you have to also acknowledge your habits there are things that you love doing that are not helping you one of the things that i had to stop is watching comedy shows i had to stop listening to circular music i had to stop what else did i have to stop that that sucked dancing i didn't stop dancing totally but you know i had to stop things that were feeding my flesh feeding what i was instead of feeding what i am becoming what i am now i love just binge watching these comedy shows and just be there and just love but my faith would contradict most of the things that they found funny my faith points out so many things homosexuality alcoholism and so many things addictions uh gluttony and negativity slander gossip things that are made fun of made light in lots of tv shows my god doesn't take them lightly and therefore i was there laughing about it and i felt convicted strongly but i'd always brush it aside so when i started walking my purpose those are things i had to leave behind it's not easy because the world will push its agenda on you the world will put its demands on you the world will tell you what to do what not to do what let's all be together let's not judge each other and it's not judgment but there is a certain standard that god demands that we leave and that means we'll stop catering to our flesh we'll stop catering to our emotions and rise above it and choose the right thing and lead our hearts and lead our emotions to what we have set our minds on because if you don't they'll keep pulling you back so habits usually come from those places where they're entangled with our emotions they're entangled with our routines they're entangled with our feelings and so we're like oh i don't want to do it but you have to face your habits and for me, I have a habit tracker in a planner. I sell this on your lane planner. The link will be in the notes. This on your lane planner helps me track my habits. So I write down the habits that I want to have enforced. Waking up at 3.45, then praying, then reading the Bible, then doing my work, then hanging out with my kids, then cooking four to three times a week, then doing something else. Like I put those habits because I want to make sure that I'm living the way I desire to live. I don't want to look back and say, what did I do with my dates? I want to make sure I'm being intentional with my time. I'm being intentional with how I'm raising my family. I'm being intentional with what I'm doing in my business. I'm being intentional and diligent in my faith because that's what drives my business. It drives my life. It drives my joy. It drives my creativity. Everything is benchmarked on that. So I have to make sure my habits are aligned to that. Because sometimes you find that you're saying, I want to get closer to God. And then none of your time is allocated to time with God. None of your habits are drawing you closer to God. And that is just an empty goal. It will lead to frustration because you will not achieve it. But also you will not have the fulfillment of having that closeness with God. So what's the point? So make sure your habits are aligned and they're drawing you closer to the purpose that you have set. And the last thing. I'm going to talk about here is change your company i talk about this a lot but your company has a your company has a huge impact on how you think what you do and how far you're gonna go it's an overused saying but it is worth saying that if you are surrounded by five losers you are the sixth one if you're surround if you're surrounded by five billionaires you're going to be the sixth one. The Bible puts it this way. A friend of fools will be a fool. He who walks with the wise will be wise. All right? So that's important and that's all true. I know we have all that loyalty. We say, oh, we, we are from the hood. We're together. You might not cut out the friendship, but the time you spend with that friendship might just be you sacrificing your purpose because they're negative, because they're stuck in the past. I had that with a friend 
my old childhood friend one time and they were talking about things of the past as if they were happening now remember that guy who did this remember that guy who liked you remember this girl who hated you i'm like oh my goodness no i can't i can't do that no not anymore because now i have grown i have moved away not to look down on them but i have moved away from all those things I was a different person then. Now I'm clear on the purpose that I have. Now, if all you do is hang out and talk about things of the past, if all you do is hang out and you're not talking about improving yourself, making your lives better, you're only complaining about the economy, about your president, about your country, about what's not working, how do you think you're going to get out of your predicament? Nothing will change. So next year will come, the other year will come, and the meaning of your life will be lost. And that usually leads to frustration in your work, in everything that you do. Because you're stuck and you don't have a plan that gets you out of that space. And therefore you get frustrated in all these places as outlets to the stuckness that you feel in your inner being. Because you're hanging with the wrong people. You're talking about the wrong things. You're talking about stagnation. You're talking about historic things that have no bearing on where you are right now. It makes sense, doesn't it? I know it does. All right, so this marks the end of our purpose series. I hope it was helpful. And I hope you do the work. Go back to the videos. Do the work. It is going to change your life. And I enjoyed having you. Please bring your friends, your family. Let's grow together. Let's grow the community. Let's continue to up level. Great videos are still coming. So don't think this is the end of it. We'll still talk about things that impact our growth. They'll impact our wealth. They'll impact our impact. So that we can live amazing, fulfilling, meaningful lives. All right, so get in touch. I always love to hear from you. My details are always in the description box. Mavis Zaina Kanjadza is the name. And like, subscribe, share. And let's meet up again Tuesday. What do you think? Let's hang out on Tuesday. A new video always comes up on Tuesday. I loved having you. Loved having these conversations. Loved hearing from you. And I will continue to be here. So let's meet up every Tuesday. See you soon. Mwah.